solid what three and a half three pound calico that's a nice one dude that's on the buddy. viking head swing that's head good. with a savage gear slug nice shimano tranks solid one tranks Great calico bass fishing at the break wall in Los Angeles as Devin Osborne was out with family and friends having an absolute ball. The bass are chewing at night. Yes, sir. How about this memory for a lifetime from the PCS show? Danny Cadota with his granddaughter, Kira, practicing for her Eastern Sierra adventure later on this summer. She fought hard and landed a beautiful trout at the PCS show. And of course, Grandpa Danny Cadota was all smiles. I think he enjoyed it even more than Kira, if that is possible. Great job and memories for a lifetime. <laughs> Hey, good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to beautiful Surfside, California, on this lovely Tuesday morning. I hope it finds you well because it's beautiful. The sunrise is gorgeous. The ocean is flat, calm. There's very little wind. We have a little wind in the forecast. I'll be talking to you about that. But this morning, well, it's absolutely beautiful. We got a lot to talk about. We got some yellowtail at the Coronado Islands that are starting to bite south of the border. Continued good signal and sign for our springtime bite here. More halibut taken out of San Pedro and also up there in the Channel Islands. They had a great weekend out of Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing and they're planning another one. In fact, at the end of tonight's report, you're gonna wanna hang on because Captain Daniel from the Island Spirit joins us in a question and answer session that we did live last night, but I've tagged it on for you, and he gets into how you can catch more halibut. Tackle everything you need to catch more halibut with Daniel at the end of today's show, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget, everybody, there's a lot of great fishing that has been going on this winter, and we're looking down the barrel of an incredible spring. You know what time it is. It's time for the morning briefing. Good morning, my friends. Oh, is that good? And it is so great to be back with you all again. So much to cover with you. Let's jump into it. Before we do, hit that like button. Share these videos with a friend, please. Tick the bell. You'll be notified when there's new content. And subscribe to the Freeman Adventures YouTube channel, as thousands of you have already done. Also, you can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Apple Podcast, and Spotify. Deeply appreciate all all your great support. Hey, before we get started here, I've got to uh, mention a six-year-old boy who recently had his birthday party, and that is Brody Ponce. Brody, good morning and happy birthday to you. Brody's parents said, what do you want to do? It's your birthday. We'll do anything you want to do. And he said, I want to go to that big hotel with that big swimming pool. And Albert and Crystal said, hmm, Vegas, huh? Oh yeah, no problem. So they took Brody and his sister and they all went to Las Vegas and celebrated his birthday. Happy birthday. It is so great to have you here with us all. All right, we got a lot to talk about. Let's go south of border. Cabo San Lucas, continued good striped marlin fishing for the most part. A little bit of Dorado in there, some yellow fin tuna bouncing around outside with the dolphin pod. So if you can locate those delphinus, you can find some yellowfin tuna. Most of it is 20 to 40 pounds, but you get some stuff over 100 pounds. Also, occasional wahoo still around down there, a little breezy at times. Down there in San Quentin, 140 miles. Wow, beautiful here. 140 miles down below the border, and there has been some outstanding fishing south of the border at 140 miles, there's a mix of yo-yo iron yellowtail. There's some great lean cod fishing. There's some big reds. San Quentin has been fantastic. And I'll tell you, that zone is a preview of what's to come in Southern California. So more yellows flowing up. We're hoping we're going to get more and more of that as another person walking by having a lovely morning. So good flow of fish headed this way. We'll bring you up there and talk just briefly about Punta Colinette because some San Diego base boats are running down there on the weekend and they're finding 
copious amounts of reds, good red fishing down there, a lot of lean cod, and also some good yo-yo iron yellowtail fishing. No huge numbers so far, but there's been some forky there. And then you move up to Santo Tomas area, there's still some breezers of yellowtail there. Many of the boats out of Ensenada, which I'll cover in a moment, are going down that way, and they're just scouring, looking for birds working. Those game fish, those yellowtail, those jacks force that bait up to the surface. It erupts on the surface, the birds get on it, and then you point your bow toward it, run up there, and throw an iron on it. Man, there is nothing more exciting than that. And we've seen that around the Santo Tomas area. So hopefully that's going to continue. And then we see a few yellows up there around also Isla Todos Santos, which is right there off of Ensenada. Speaking of Ensenada, good mixed bag fishing down there. Lots of great rock fishing, lingcod, big bonita, occasional yellowtail, a little shot of barracuda from time to time. Haven't seen that for a while, but hopefully that's going to get back in the picture again here very, very soon. Nice fishing in that neck of the woods. Beautiful Ensenada. It's such a lovely place to visit. All right, let's talk a little bit more now about the situation up in this side of the border. And of course, when we're talking here, we're kind of talking about also south. Well, let me clarify. Bluefin tuna. All right, most recent trip, Polaris Supreme two-day trip, 18 bluefin tuna, 50 to 150 pound fish. They saw good evidence of fish on that trip. A week previous to that, the Old Glory had 24 on the bluefin tuna, mostly 40 to 60 pounders for uh, clay on that trip. So we've got some bluefin tuna around. What we don't have is much coverage. We don't have a whole fleet of boats out there wandering around, bumping into that fish and locating it. I think as time goes by, we'll get more boats on it. And we're hoping that for our April 4th through April 9th five-day trip, we're one of the guys that locates the fish or they've already been located for all of us because that is going to be a great trip. And there's still room on that for you to join us. So guys are still looking for that bluefin. A lot of fish being taken at night. Two to 300 gram jigs have been working pretty well. Knife jigs, flat fall jigs, that kind of stuff. But also you want to have the heavier stuff in case you encounter some wind current or fish at uh, a deeper in deeper depths or at depth down there, 400 feet or something like that, you're going to want to have a heavier jig. 130 pound spectra is what I like. 200 pound leader material. Drop when the captain tells you to drop to the exact depth. And we'll continue to watch that for you very, very close. I believe the Polaris Supreme has some more trips coming up. So there is bluefin. We'll see if it builds from here. And we got our fingers crossed that someone's going to come up with a hit here this weekend. Coronado Islands, the Mission Bell went to the Coronado Islands and had four yellowtail yesterday. Nice hit for them. Scott Buecher, our very own Scott Buecher, who is on that independent strip and providing a margarita bar for all of you, is the galley cook on board the Bell this morning. Heading out, he said he'd be reporting to us on how they do. I'm not sure if they're going to fish local bass or go back to the islands, but that was a nice hit. And they had 15 lingcod to go along with it and some rockfish in addition to that. So the Coronado Islands, this is not the first time we've caught yellowtail there. And just another indication that that fish is walking up the line into SoCal La Jolla. Some kayakers there and private boaters continue to catch some nice big fat yo-yo iron yellowtail. It has been pretty good. And the grade of fish, spectacular, 15 to 25, some bigger than that. Yo-yo iron is a jig that is small and heavy that you sink deep. You want to fish heavy line like 60 pound. You wind on it fast to get a bite. And when you do get a bite, you don't rear back on the rod to set the hook and then throw the fish slack and off it goes. You just keep turning the handle of your reel. That's how you set the hook. The fish will pull line against the drag and then have at it with that 60 pound. It is so much fun, especially on that big grade fish. So some good stuff indeed going on there. We'll continue to watch that for you very, very closely. Hey, I forgot to mention that Abdul Ryan and Manny Mercado are down in the Bay of LA, about a 450 mile drive down the beautiful Baja Peninsula. And they continue to have a dream trip down there. Great Cabrilla fishing and now catching yellowtail. So nice hit for the boys down there. Hopefully they are gonna continue to pull on those fish. Long range, kind of all over the place here. The Red Rooster 3 with some good wahoo fishing and yellowfin tuna fishing on a 16 day trip. So they're way down into Mexico and they are enjoying some really outstanding fishing down that way. Long range fishing this year 
has been pretty darn good, but we've really not had consistent catches of those giant yellowfin tuna. We've had really good spurts. In fact, on this trip on the rooster, they've had some good fishing. So we'll continue to monitor and watch that for you very, very closely also. All right, we continue to watch the situation as the sun is actually, it's like summertime, everybody. You gotta get down here. This surf should be alive today, man. I'm telling you, I'll get to that in a moment. But when we talk about the SoCal bite, we've got to talk about sheephead, whitefish, sculpin, some wintertime bass, and halibut. We've had all of that in Southern California this winter. And at times, it's been absolutely phenomenal. The pride on a recent trip with 16 anglers had 80 halibut out of San Pedro in 22nd Street Landing. An absolutely fabulous trip. The pride yesterday was out. They had 16 halibut. And you know, you juxtapose it next to that score that was so enormous from the day before. And you say, oh, 16 halibut. Yeah, I guess that's okay. It's phenomenal fishing. That is really, really good. They released another 15 halibut and had a few bass to go along with that. So not bad at all. The halibut bite continuing here in SoCal. Landings down there in San Diego all the way up the coast. Continue to catch some sand bass and calico bass here this winter time as Lupe goes by. Good morning, Lupe. Um, pretty good bass fishing down there out of the San Diego base landings. Up there around Dana Warsford fishing, they continue to catch some sheep's head and some whitefish and some sculpin. Remember, rockfish season is going to open up here in SoCal on April the 1st. So it's right around the corner, and that should be really, really fantastic. On board the victory limits of whitefish yesterday out of Long Beach. So they had some good fishing, and we're seeing a lot of that around here right now. And a young man by the name of TJ came all the way down from Alaska to fish on the Western Pride. Good morning, buenos dias, hermano. Um, we uh, had TJ on board the Western Pride, and he caught not only limits of sheep's head, he'd never caught a sheep head before, he caught the jackpot sheep head. As you can see there, way to go, TJ. That is one heck of a catch. Hey, this weekend, you can jump on board the El Patron for 135 bucks and go to Catalina Island. Check in with Long Beach Sword Fishing and reserve your spot while there is still time. They're gonna limit that trip to 20 anglers and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Catalina Island, El Patron, Long Beach Sword Fishing 310-432-8993. And don't forget, up there out of Ventura Sword Fishing, we also have our friend on board, the Island Spirit. Don't forget, Daniel will be joining us at the end of this show today. Hang on for all those halibut tips. But Daniel's running another great trip this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, out of Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing. And on Sunday, kids 12 and under fish for free. If you book online at VenturaSportFishing.com, put in preseason 20 at checkout. You can do this before April the 1st, and you get 20% off your trip. Kids fish free, 20% off. Fishing with Captain Daniel. It can't be beat this weekend out of Ventura Harbor Sword Fishing. You're going to want to do that. And of course, out there they had plenty of whitefish, three halibut on their first trip of the year. They're going to look around for sheep's head. They're looking for white sea bass on every single trip. It's not really a half day trip, if you ask me. They leave at eight in the morning, come back at four in the afternoon. I guess it's an extended, real extended half day trip. So that should be a lot of fun. No question about it. So we still got that good mixed bag fishing going on here for LA Orange County base boats and up into the Channel Islands. That is really good to see that kind of fishing. How did you like that break wall bass fishing that we let in with here? Man, that was some nice fishing as Devin Osborne had some really good nighttime fishing. One night wasn't that great. Another night was fantastic, but the LA and Long Beach break wall can provide some outstanding action. And that was certainly the case in the surf. We continue to see really great wintertime fishing. We're in the midst of a grunion run right now. So tonight and tomorrow night, you can come down to the beach and see those little critters walk up here on the beach. And that is so much fun. It's such a great experience for the kids if they happen to be uh, available. It's a little late, probably going to be around 1130 tonight, something like that. But it's a lot of fun. But important for anglers also, as surf fishermen, is that when those fish come up on the beach, of course, 
that's when you'll start to see more predators move in here. And there's been some really good halibut fishing here the last couple of days. We're catching halibut in this real short water, a foot or two. I'm not kidding you, they're right up in here feeding, sometimes deeper than that, five feet of water. But you can catch those big flat fish. I mean, they're designed perfectly to be in that short water, and you can catch them here right now, along with some perch, along with some yellowfin croaker. It's been fantastic. And remember that bar perch tournament continues at Big Fish, bait and tackle on the corner of Seal Beach Boulevard and Pacific Coast Highway in Seal Beach, California. All you gotta do is go buy a ruler there, you take a photo of your perch, and then you upload it to their Instagram account, Big Fish Bait and Tackle. And if you've got the big one for the month, you get this gorgeous, beautiful custom rod that you can fish with and enjoy for a lifetime. It's that nice. And get this, they're doing it every single month this year. So next month, first of the month, we'll have a new contest that we'll be announcing right here for all of you. You want to take advantage of that. Don't forget it's tax season. I know it's a pain in the you know what, but there's a man out there who will make that all go away for you. And that's our friend Tim Marquez at A Best Income Tax. Give Tim a call today and relieve yourself of that tax burden. He can help you with your past uh, taxes or your present taxes, whatever you need. He's a man you can trust. And if you have heating and air conditioning needs, you want to turn to John Lopez because John at Efficient Heating and Air Conditioning will take really great care of you. Give John a call right now and he'll take care of everything for you. So some really good surf fishing. Now the lobster season here in Southern California is going to end on Wednesday, March the 20th. So you got to get out and take advantage of it. Now I mentioned the weather. It's gorgeous. It's going to be beautiful. Going to have some wind on Thursday in some areas. It's going to be a little bit breezy and then it's going to come down and be an absolutely gorgeous weekend. So watch that breeze in some locations. We'll see if that is going to get up. The native son who's had such a spectacular year out of 22nd Street Landing with their halibut derby will resume fishing tomorrow. We'll see how they do. Last trip, seven halibut on board, but they've had a spectacular year. It really has been good. A reminder again, Captain Daniel right here at today at the end of the report. He's got all those halibut tips for you. You're not going to want to miss that. You're also not going to want to miss fishing with them out of Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing this weekend where you can get 20% off. How about a little bit of freshwater stuff for you? Doug Tilk, who's a huge member of the Freeman Adventures family, catching bass in Texas, a nice six-pounder up there with his brother in Magnolia, Texas, fishing in the Fayette, uh, yeah, Fayette County Lake in Texas and having a ball. Doug, always good to see you. So happy you're having a great time. April the 13th. You can fish for free if you're a kid. In fact, Bright Lake is going to have over 50 rods and reels free for the kids to use. You just got to show up there and enjoy it. It's a great way to introduce kids to fishing. Again, that is going to be April 13th. Bright Lake Kids Fish Free. You're going to want to take advantage of that one. I guarantee you that. Well, there is so much going on. And guess what? It's time for the not too, yeah, it is too early. The too early albacore forecast coming up in the next two days. We'll have that. And also tonight, it's Tackle Shop Confessions with Sam De La Torre. Um, We're going to see if Sam's going to eat some baby eels on the show. In addition to everything else, we're going to do that. Sam and I will eat some eels. And uh, Jack Sepulveda sent those down. Our great family member, Jack, good morning. Thanks for a great challenge for Sam and I. Maybe you have a whole new segment to our show. But in addition to that, we'll be talking about all the latest fishing and the tackle you need to make it happen for you in 2024. We have got a great trip on the Apollo coming up. There it is. It's in June. It's already almost booked up. A reverse two and a half day trip that should be absolutely magnificent because the range it gives us and the variety of fish that we're going to be catching in June, if things hold up the way I think they're going to hold up. White sea bass, halibut, bluefin tuna, yellowtail, and rockfish, and so much more. The possibilities are absolutely endless on that great trip. All right, stay tuned. Daniel is next with a great little live update we did last night. A lot of great halibut information, and keep your eyes open 
for that crazy guy doing his dumb albacore forecast again this year. Take care, my friends. Have a great one. And I hope to see you really, really soon. With Captain Daniel from the Island Spirit up there at Ventura Sport Fishing. I want to let you all know that later tonight, normally we have the live show Tackle Shop Confessions. That will be tomorrow night. Daniel, you're there on the Island Spirit out of Ventura. How are you, my friend? I'm doing well, Phil. How are you doing? Oh, man, look, I got my coffee. <laughs> there you mm. go. I'm doing fantastic. And I get to talk to my buddy about some exceptional fishing you had over the weekend. You know, we talked about your first trip. You laid out yeah. the game plan, and uh, you got some surprises on there. I mean, you had a decent little halibut snap and some other stuff. Tell us how the bite was for you out of Ventura sport fishing. Yeah, we had a we had a really phenomenal day. I was uh, I was super happy with the you know results for the first trip. We uh, we went to Anacapa. That's the closest island we have to the harbor here. It's about fifteen miles. Uh, from the bay here, we uh, started on the front by the arch, that uh, that famous arch that you always see in all the Channel Islands pictures. We uh, started our day fishing nearby there and had some decent whitefish fishing for a while. And then uh, when it got breezy, we swung around to the other side, caught some more uh, whitefish, some sculpin, and then um, closed off our day with a uh, with a couple of halibut drifts. And uh, it was fun. It was a uh, productive it was a really fun day yeah no kidding i mean i had one gentleman send me uh, an email or a text i can't remember which but he said man we had such a good time no he sent me photos i think seth um seth what might have been his son and he had a halibut and yeah uh, that's tom tom yeah tom lucas yeah, yeah yeah tom lucas that's it and uh tom seemed like such a nice guy and he sounded like he had just a great trip so I mean, I'm assuming that everybody else listened to the last podcast we did. Maybe they didn't. So what is the run that the Island Spirit is doing this year? And what are the parameters in terms of where you fish, et cetera? Yeah, so we're doing an extended half-day run. Um, we will be leaving the dock every morning at 8 a.m. Given that we have enough reservations, we're going to be leaving at 8 a.m. every morning. Um, it's an extended half day, so it's longer than your typical half day trip. That's like four or five hours. We're scheduled to return at four. And um, I have no problem staying a little later if, you know, nobody's in a rush to go home and we're having a good time and catching fish, you know, love to do it. So we uh, I don't think we tied the boat up till 530 yesterday because we started, you know, catching some halibut and the guys wanted to try for a little longer. That doesn't surprise me one bit, yeah. knowing how hard you fish. <laughs> what was the key for the halibut in terms of your rig and bait and everything else? And I know you said on the last show, fluorocarbon's a must. Yeah, fluorocarbon's very important. Um, so I, uh, our halibut area was super close to where we uh, were fishing whitefish, but I uh, idled around for a little bit and gave the guys time to get their rig switched over. So the, the deckhands went around and they uh, set up everybody with 20-pound test, super light fluorocarbon, and uh, we tried both regular dropper loops. That, that's my personal favorite way to fish halibut, it's just a regular dropper loop, but I know a lot of people like the reverse dropper loop as well, so we kind of tried both. We were about half and half with our 18 people, um, but everybody had a live bait um, on a dropper loop one way or another, either traditional or reverse. We, we actually ended up having sardine at our bait receiver. I thought we were only going to have anchovy, but they brought in some uh, sardine the, the night before. So we had everybody fishing live sardines. And yeah, I mean, we got five bites and landed three of them. And they were all in the regular dropper loop, not the reverse. Oh, so, really? So you're experimenting. Yeah, maybe there's something it. to that. Yeah. Yeah, there's the scientific method, man. You had a hypothesis, you tested it, and you found out the regular <laughs> dropper loop worked. That's great. <laughs> Uh, choosing a good hot bait so important, right? Very, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it does take patience to fish halibut. You know, it can be boring sometimes. It's like watching paint dry. You're just sitting there, sitting there. But um, you can't just sit there and leave the same bait on. Um, you know, for longer than five, ten minutes when you're uh, when you're fishing 
sardine anchovy stuff like that it's important to you know have a bait that's kicking on there and looks presentable so you know we had to constantly remind everybody to change their baits and uh you know it worked out so i know anglers they think to themselves man my bait's in a good zone right now but i haven't had a bite for five minutes do i change it do i soak it what's the answer to that how much time do you give a bait before you say I don't know what's wrong with this thing, but there's something wrong with it. Um, well, it's diff it depends on the kind of fishing you're doing. When you're fishing, you know, bass, tuna, like fly lining a bait, um, most of your bites are going to be in the first 30 seconds. You know, so if you've had a bait on for longer than like 90 seconds, I know the long soak is a thing sometimes, but the majority of the time, uh, if your bait's on there for longer than 90 seconds, you're kind of just wasting time. So that's, you know, that, that applies for tuna fishing, bass fishing, stuff like that. But when you're, uh, when you're fishing live bait on a, on a dropper loop, you can probably give it about five minutes, 10 minutes before it's, you know, time for a fresh one. Right. Okay. Now, recent history suggests that the Channel Islands has been the epicenter of the halibut fishing it has been remarkable the last few years i look at some of those scores and i'd like to say they're a throwback to when i was a kid but there's no damn way that halibut fishing was that good when i was a kid it's better now <laughs> it's been really good up yeah. there yeah it's it's nuts um super unprecedented there, there actually was a really good uh halibut year about I think 10 years ago, like 2014, I think it was where yeah, yeah. the fishing was insane up here, but it really hasn't been as good as it's been the last two years for, for quite some time. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's they're biting both in the shallow water and the, you know, squid beds. It's, there's, there's a lot of fish. It's pretty impressive. All right. Very good. Daniel Lightfoot says hello to everybody. If you have a question out there, be sure and ask lots of people are tuning in. Already, I think you, we got a new show here, Daniel. You're gonna yeah. have to you're gonna have to be on here on a regular basis. How about conditions? Like are are conditions uh, normal? Are they warmer? Are they cooler? What do you see in terms of water temp and all that stuff? Well, this time of year, the water is pretty cold. You know, as to be expected. Yesterday was about fifty. I had fifty eight degrees on my gauge, so pretty pretty cold. Fairly cold still, but um. Yeah, it seems like all the halibut that's been caught this year has been in, you know, really shallow water, like really, really shallow as, you know, some guys are catching them and, you know, like two, three fathoms, like really, really shallow. We caught wow. them about six fathoms yesterday, so like 30, 30 to 36 feet of water. Um, but yeah, it seems like so far they're in the shallow water, like up, up tight on these, you know, beaches up here. I uh, I fished somewhere I've never fished before yesterday. Just, you know, gave it a shot. You know, nice little beach on the back of Anacapa. Looked kind of fishy. There was some bait around, so we, we tried it. And, you know, obviously got some bites. So I'm excited to, you know, try some more spots back there. Hopefully get some more halibut on the boat next weekend. Yeah, that sounds great. Daniel Lightfoot wants to know what size weight you're using. So uh, we were in really shallow water, like I said, like six fathoms. So uh, when you're fishing that shallow, you, you don't really need anything heavier than a four ounce. You can get away with like a four, five, six ounce sinker. Um, towards the end, it got it got a little bit windier and we were moving pretty fast. So I had guys switch to like an eight so it didn't scope their lines out too far. But um, yeah, it seemed like as light as four ounces, as heavy as eight ounces for the halibut drifting. All right, good stuff. Um, setting the hook on a halibut, when is the right time to do it? Some people say, oh, no, no, a halibut, you know, it takes its time when it's on your bait. It's, uh, you gotta, you gotta just be patient. You can't set the hook too early. What is the answer? When do you set the hook? When the rod starts to load up or what? So we like to overcomplicate it and, and think about it a lot, but um, the reality of it is uh, sometimes they just grab the bait. You, you, the fish is going to be hooked before you really know what happened. You know what I mean? You're, you're just yeah. going to be sitting there, you know, bored, time's going by, and, the, and then your rod's bent, you know? They they don't really um, – with, with squid, it's different, but with live bait, with, like, anchovy and sardine, they don't really, like, nibble at it and nibble at it and pick it. They kind of just slam it, and, and it's there. 
you know, but uh, in the case that you do feel a bite, you do feel a tap, you just want to hold still, be patient, don't don't spook it, don't pull the bait out of its mouth, uh, just let, let your rod do all the work. So your, your rod's going to load up, and at that point, you just need to start cranking. You don't want to, you know, set the hook all crazy and, and do anything like that. Just let and the rod do what it's supposed to do and just gr grind into the bite and let the let the rod do all the work. Are you fishing J hooks or circle hooks, or what, what are you doing? I prefer J hooks for all island fishing. Anytime you're fishing at an island, you can leave the circle hooks at home pretty much. J hooks are, are the way to go. Oh, and you get to set the hook with them, man. That's the fun part. Yeah, that is the fun part. <laughs> um, what yeah. about uh, white sea bass? Did you look around, poke your nose around for that around any of the squid beds? I didn't see any squid where I was at. Um, so I don't really have any information for you on sea bass, but, uh, you know, we're, we're getting to that time of year where uh, squid starts to show up. It already has showed up at some of these islands. Uh, I know Cody and the Californian saw a little bit of squid where he was fishing. Um, so, yeah, it could it could happen very soon. I'm sure we're going to be see, seeing sea bass in the counts before too long. Yeah, I would think so. So when is your next trip and when can people join you? Yeah, so I have a trip on Saturday morning. Um we have a open party half day trip leaving at 8 a.m. Ventura Sport Fishing on Saturday morning. We already have a few people signed up and we would like to get more. Once we get about, you know, a dozen reservations, we can officially make the trip a go. So um, if you guys would like to get on, try to catch some bottom fish, maybe a few halibut as well. Uh, call the landing at 805-676-3474, or you can visit us at VenturaSportFishing.com, and uh, you'll be looking for the island spirit. All right, and if you put preseason 20 in there at checkout, do you still get the 20% discount until April 1st? Yes, sir. So uh, that's the other thing. Um, make sure you use the, the promo code. No reason to not save 20% if you can. It's a great deal. Uh, it'll work on any trip you book before April 1st, even if the trip itself is later in the year. As long as you make the reservation before April 1st, they will honor the 20% off. So we have that promotion for Saturday. And then on Sunday, we have Kids Fish Free again. So if you have a child ages 12 or younger, you can get them on the boat for free with each adult ticket that you buy. All right. Ton of people watching here. MJ wants oh, yeah. to know. He wants to know when the squid normally in a normal year will show up in the Channel Islands. Usually during the winter time, like uh, they already have started to show up. Nobody's been to the outer islands yet that I know of. Um, you know, the Endeavor is going to start running trips in a couple weeks here. And uh, there's, there's no reason to believe that there isn't already squid here, you know. And when there's squid, the sea bass come. So uh, I think we we might have a good early sea bass season. Well, that would be great. You know, I got to tell you something, Daniel. You talked mm -hmm. about the deckhands going around and tying everybody up. I was there on the island spirit, and I was freaking amazed at the guys not only doing that, but then after they'd done that, doing a second check, going through and oh, check yeah. it again. They're not like screwing around. They're really good at that. Yeah. No, it's super important. Um, there's a lot of experienced fishermen that come out that, you know, are more than capable of tying their own stuff and, and they like to, but then there's, you know, novice anglers as well. So we like to make sure that the guy that is fishing for his first time has, you know, just as good a chance to catch a trophy fish as, you know, as does, let's say, someone like Tom, who's been fishing for, you know, 30, 40 years and has worked on boats when he was a kid, you know, like his, his son, I don't know how old he is, 16, 17, he caught a halibut, you know? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So uh, we just want to make sure everybody has, you know, equal opportunity to catch a game fish. So it's important that the guys uh, help everybody tie up properly and then... Uh, Afterwards, we also like to go back and uh, check everyone's drag, make sure that it's not buttoned down or too loose because right. it's, uh, it's pretty heartbreaking when you hook one of these nice fish and your, your drag's not set right and it's, you know, it's gone before you can do anything about it. Oh, man. Yeah, I know what you mean. Robert Graber is joining us. He says, good afternoon, Phil and Captain Daniel and the Friedman Adventures family. Thanks for reporting. 
on the 805. Woohoo! He's loving the 805 <laughs> reports, man. Oh, yeah. Good morning or afternoon. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. That's why I'm drinking coffee. I don't know what it is either. <laughs> Somebody asked me what day of the week it was a moment ago, and I go, hell, I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. Carlos Sanchez is joining us. And Carlos wants to know what the limit. Hey, Carlos, welcome, by the way. Carlos wants to know what the limit on halibut and white sea bass is, I guess, both in terms of possession and size. Yeah, so we'll do size first. Halibut have to be 22 inches. Um, there is a, there has been quite a bit of halibut that are on that like border of being, you know, legal or short. With this, you know, influx of halibut that's been here, we have seen a quite a bit more like small male halibut than we have in past years. So it is super important to make sure that you measure them if it's, you know. If it looks close, just, just don't chance it. If you're, you know, measuring your fish and it's maybe barely 22, you know, maybe, maybe not. Just, just throw it back. It's not, it's not worth the, the risk. You don't want to end up with a ticket or anything. So for, uh, for us, if we are to keep a halibut, we want to make sure that it's, you know, 22 and a half inches. That it's, you know, very clearly over the 22 inch mark. And uh, sea bass are 28 inches. So sea bass and barracuda are the two fish that are the same for the length limit they have to be 28 inches um and in terms of how many you can keep you can have five halibut uh all year round it's been that way for a while and uh the sea bass limit changes throughout the year so right now you can only have one but then on june 15th it changes to three from june 15th to november 15th you can keep three white sea bass per person per day and then um, from November 15th through the winter time, all the way until June the next year, you can only have one. All right, good stuff. All right, you are listening to Captain Daniel Hadawi here on the Freeman Adventures YouTube channel, talking about the island spirit and some great trips they have coming up this next weekend at Aventura Sword Fishing. You should join him. Hey, uh, MJ says... Um, he wants to know, and maybe he missed when you were talking about dropper loop, but that's okay. What's your go-to oh, yeah. rig? What's your go-to rig for halibut? And do you like a rig with a three-way swivel? So, um, my personal favorite rig for catching halibut is just your <laughs> classic dropper loop rig. For me, I think it's the most effective. It's it's always worked the best for me. You know, fishing personally with the rod and reel. Um, I like my sinker on the bottom, and then about three to four feet up you want a long dropper loop like a eight to twelve inch dropper loop with a with a small j hook if you're gonna fish a live sardine or anchovy and then a, a big j hook if you're gonna fish a squid so i like the traditional dropper loop the best for halibut um but another rig that i don't mind and i've seen be very effective is the reverse dropper loop so that's when you have a like a smaller loop you'll, you'll do a really short loop put your like six ounce sinker on that and then have like a two and a half, three foot uh, strand of line going off of your sinker. And um, you'll just, you'll tie on your, your hook with like a San Diego knot or whatever to where your sinker would normally go on a traditional dropper loop rig. Um, so that one works really well. Um, I know some people are a fan of the, the swivel, the three-way swivels, but I'm I'm super against swivels. I I really 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 don't like swivels. I mean that that's just a bias thing. I'm sure it works great for, you know, people on private boats or, you know, that just go fishing by themselves or on six packs with a couple other people. But uh, just just growing up fishing and working on on like sport boats, large sport boats, uh, swivels are like my sworn enemy. I I can't do it. <laughs> I can't bring myself to use swivels for anything. Why? You know? What What happens when people are fishing with a they're, swivel? They're just tangle magnets. It's 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 a tangle magnet. I don't know how to explain it, but I mean swivels just find a way to just create the worst tangles possible. They're and that's useful. not something that we want to deal with when we're working with game fish. So whenever we're fishing game fish, it's it's really like a strong preference of mine to have everybody with the same rig. Have everybody's rigs checked by the deckhands. Make sure everything looks right. The hooks are on the right way. They're not backwards. All the drags are set properly. Um, these are really nice fish, and it's it's really heartbreaking when you lose them. So you want to kind of minimize any you know potential errors down the road by uh, by just 
having everything look nice and everybody fishing the same kind of rig and having the right equipment. Uh, it's just for that reason, I don't like swivels, but if, if it's your personal preference to, you know, fish a swivel, I'm not going to make you not fish it. You know, it's, it's your choice. <laughs> Perfect. Um, 25 pound floral, is that what you're fishing? Uh, or 20 or what are you fishing? Yeah. For, uh, for really, really shallow water fishing, 20 is just fine. I like 20. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're fishing in the sand, so, I mean, right? You you can get away with 20 yeah. easily. Yeah. There is there is a little bit of, like, kelp and rock around. You know, sometimes these halibut like to hang out, you know, on the edge of the kelp beds and, you know, between rocks and, like, a little bit of structure on the bottom. So it's it's not out of the ordinary to get stuck on the bottom once in a while. It happens. There's nothing you can do about it. But, yeah, they hang out in these sand patches in between all the structures. So, um Usually you're not going to get stuck on anything, you know, but it could happen. You could get hung up in some kelp or rock or whatever, but you know, it happens. If you lose your rig, the deck hands will tie you a new one, you know, faster than you can even go get a new sinker. So you don't, you don't have to worry about it. Well, Daniel, I'm an expert halibut fisherman. My biggest fish <laughs> was in Ensenada. I made a cast with a tatty lure, got a huge bird's nest. My jig, <laughs> my jig, Ended up on the bottom. I started winding up, and I said, "Oh hell, I'm I'm snagged on something." I looked down, and there's a 35 pound halibut. So there you hey, go. Better, better lucky than good, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Always. Carlos has an excellent. Carlos, great questions tonight. This is turning into a whole halibut seminar. Oh yeah, I love it. And he wants to know if you recommend the trap rig for flatties. Yeah, I've seen it be super effective. Uh, it's not really practical um, to set up a trap rig for everybody. It's it's kind of complicated. It takes some time, but uh, if you know how to do it and you want to use it, by all means, it, I've seen it work. I mean, I've seen. Um, I think it was Joe Martinez. You know Joe Martinez. He's oh, been on your show before. Joe Martinez. Yes, yeah. I love Joe. We had a we had a trip. Uh, I think two summers back on the Endeavor, we were fishing halibut at San Miguel. And uh, he was using a trap rig for halibut because he uh, he missed a couple bites, switched to the trap rig, and uh, instantly he caught a halibut, and it was only attached to the uh, to the little treble hook on the back. Wow! So that that trap rig, uh, you know, produced a nice nice fish for him. So uh, ever since I've seen him using it, I've, I've thought like, oh, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, really, really. Yeah. Hey, you you mentioned that fishing a sardine or an anchovy, the fish will jump on it sometimes, and, and you're hooked. You're on. Is it different with a squid? And if so, what is the deal? Do you have to exercise a little more patience? Yeah, with a squid, you usually have to exercise a little more patience, like you said. Um, sometimes the halibut, it seems like maybe they try to kill the squid first, or they, you know, kind of nibble on it, suck on it a little bit, whatever. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing is when you're getting those little like nibbles, you, you don't want to swing and set the hook. You want to wait for your rod tip to load up. Super important. That's the way, that's the number one way we see people, you know, missing out on catching these fish is just by getting too excited and trying to swing and set the hook too fast when they get a bite. You really want to just, you know, hold steady and pay attention to your rod tip and wait for it to load up and get heavy and then you just have to grind it into the bite. I that's noticed those. I noticed those nice halibut. I saw those nice whitefish. How was your fishing for viejas? You know what a vieja is? You know the Spanish word? It's a sheep's head. How was your oh. sheep's head fishing? Oh, man. Uh, the, the sheep head were non-existent for us. I don't know why. We uh, huh. we did not see any sheep head throughout the day, but uh, I'd like to. So on the next trip, I'm going to go fish somewhere else. You know, maybe there just wasn't a ton of sheep head in the area I was fishing. But, uh, yeah, we're going to try a new area next time and try to add some sheep head to the mix. All right. Well, we're almost ready to wrap this up, everybody. Um, I looked at the weather for next mm -hmm. weekend, and it looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. Uh, it was really nice for us going out, about as good as it gets in the morning, and it you know, it did get kind of breezy towards the end of the day. But, uh, yeah, next weekend looks even better, so I'm excited. All right, so your next two trips are going to be Saturday and then Sunday when kids 12 and under with a paid adult fish for free. Why don't you sure. tell us one more time again, Daniel, how to sign up for that? Yeah, so the best way, guys, is calling the landing. If you'd like to call the landing, that is 805-676-3474. You can talk to somebody in the office about getting on the boat. 
Um, if you mention the code preseason20 while you're talking with them on the phone, they'll get you 20% off your trip. Oh, so that's great. I didn't the realize promo that. Code. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can. You don't have to book it online to get the deal. You can just mention it to whoever picks up the phone in the office. But uh, yeah, the other way, just going online to our website, VenturaSportFishing.com, and then you can see our full schedule. And it's super simple to book online there as well. Excellent. Yusef Swan says he's had a great deal of success stripping out mackerel and fishing goats sheephead by doing that. He said that's been yeah. a good way to go. Yeah, I've seen that work too. A lot of guys like the shrimp too. I mean, it, they eat squid perfectly fine. It's uh, it's a really fun fish to catch. I, I know why people like them. They uh, they do put up a fight. It's really fun. All right. What is Sam De La Torre saying? Sam, let's see. What does it say? Oh, go Fords. Go Fords. Yep. Got got one. Yeah. Do you know what that means? I don't. <laughs> Can you elaborate, <laughs> Sam? <laughs> Sam De La Torre owns Island Fishing Tackle in Carson, California. Normally, him and I do a show tonight, Cody, but He's got something going on, so we're going to do it tomorrow night. Okay. So, uh, oh, Gifford got one. Gifford. Uh, Bob Gifford's a guy that fishes with us all the time. So. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, he's talking about the blanket? Are you talking about a Sam Marcos blanket, Sam? What are you talking <laughs> about? Oh, my God. I have no idea. I think Sam's uh, – maybe he can't do the show tonight because he's into the tequila or something. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's it. <laughs> hey, Daniel, can't thank you enough. Great halibut seminar tonight. I'm looking forward to coming up and fishing with you, but I highly admonish everybody. I tell you, go up there and fish with these guys because they are going to treat you right. You're going to have a great day on the water, and I know you are going to enjoy it. Yeah, let's do it, guys. We have some trips this weekend, and uh, super excited to take you guys out. So let's, uh, let's go fishing. All right, Daniel. Take great care of yourself, my friend. Hey, say hi to everybody up there for me. Sal up in the office, and we'll have to get Cody on here. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, everybody else up there, man. Uh, you guys have my deep and abiding respect. You're a lot of fun to fish with. And Tucker McCombs just does a magnificent <laughs> job. It's great to see you yeah. again here tonight. All righty. Thank you so much, Phil. Have a good night. All right. Same to you, Daniel. Have a good one, and we'll see you soon. All righty. Sounds good. Good night, guys. Take care. Bye.